Hello and welcome or welcome back to Small Talk. I'm Kirsty. And I'm Naomi. Sans headphones again because I broke them again. Oh god, what is she like? Um today we're talking about I'm gonna say the question before we like go on a tangent about our lives. So Yeah. Today we're talking about if we were given five million pounds, because I'm gonna I'm gonna make it British. To yeah. open a small museum what kind of museum would you create so that's our question we will talk about that but um yeah let's just chat first i was just mm-hmm. telling naomi that i got myself a coffee on the way home from work today is monday that we're recording this um so our new episode will be coming out tonight. So if you haven't already watched, watched, li- <laughs> listened to that episode, um, make sure you listen to that after this. Um, and I'm just struggling because my first day back at work since the holidays and I've been off for three weeks, although I was writing an essay for two, but it's just a new kind of lack of energy. Yeah, <sighs> honestly. I just finished my first week back at work and the level of exhaustion, like I expected Mm. it, but not to this extent. Like when I say I slept like a log last night, which I normally do anyway, Mm. I sleep very well. But last (laughs) night that was like a different level of just, just (laughs) dead sleep. And I like every part of my body was hurting. And I was like, I shouldn't feel this way at this age. It's not normal. (laughs) Yeah, my head is killing actually. Mm. right now but and I'm just drinking coffee like that's gonna help it, that's but. really gonna help it's so iced much. it's iced so it's not so bad There's my order there. is a dirty chai iced latte with oat milk that's like my go-to at the moment what does that even mean well and I so it's just like an iced chai latte but if it's dirty it means you put coffee in it like actual oh, this okay. chai latte is just the flavoring um with oat milk Mm. I just got one mm. shot though and I think maybe I should have gotten two but <laughs> it is 5 nice. p.m so <laughs> yeah yeah fun. yeah that's fair that is fair so I feel like I haven't been to a Starbucks in so long oh my god oh don't out me but I don't miss it <laughs> I don't miss it I only just PSA to everyone listening I only went to the Starbucks because it's a drive-through on the way home normally I would yeah. go to a local I prefer local coffee and I'm not a big Starbucks person I don't really support franchises when I can avoid it, but no local cafes do drive throughs And yeah. your, your gal needed a pick me up, and I couldn't wait until the one hour drive home. I needed it on the drive. I was that's really fair struggling. enough. No judgment um, here. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And the exciting thing I discovered today is that Fearless Taylor's version, which obviously I've been listening to for since it came out, but it like is the exact length well it's one song less what like so there's yeah so it's one song more sorry than my commute to my Mm. school and back perfect so I can play fearless the whole way there and the whole way home and then I get home I've just got one song left I haven't listened to and I was like that is actually the dream because I hate like I don't mind if I'm shuffling a playlist but if I'm like in the mood to listen to a certain album, but I don't want to listen to it through again, I hate having to think about like, what do I want to listen to? Because I probably wouldn't have cued anything. And then it's yeah. just like, and then you just kind of end up sitting in silence or something. So, <laughs> well, sometimes, because or like Google, like I have a, my phone is Google. So I can be like, hey, Google, and it will do stuff. But sometimes it doesn't sync with Spotify and it won't work anymore. Oh, that's it's annoying. really annoying. Yeah. Yeah. So, fun fact so that's nice it's nice for me yeah I, was gonna say, I don't that. know what I would do with that information but if it makes you happy then you know what's well, like great. a one hour it's like a so it's like it must be like two hours long or something yeah the whole album okay so do you want to go first do you want me to go first um you go first okay I'll say my my first idea I might come up okay. with more while we're chatting Okay. Because this one's kind of weird, but I don't care. So um, I think I would have a museum <laughs> of um, white hot chocolate. <laughs> Just because I know, so, but like, I. That's the would... last thing I expected you to say, but go on, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Just because I think there's so many different types of white hot chocolate that people can, do you know, I wouldn't make it a museum in terms of like the history of it. I'd make it a museum okay. in terms of like the ratings. <laughs> terms of okay. like how good it is 
I don't really know if museums can do that, but they should if they don't. So, um, because I just think that, ev- like, I could literally rate every place I've ever had a white hot chocolate. I could rate which the best ones were, and I could tell you mm-hmm. where the best ones I've ever had were. Well, I couldn't tell you the name of the the place, unfortunately, the one I the best one because it was when I was like eight. But yeah, yeah, I like know. And I, I've got like the whole thing worked out and the ratio. And then when I find the perfect one, there could be like an ex, and um, they could like have a, could I, what's it called? An exhibition? Yeah. They could have an exhibition where like you try and make the perfect one and then see if you did it. And I was like, no, oh, that'd be fun. So, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, what I, that's what came to mind because I just have a lot of expertise on <laughs> That's very, very specific and very niche, but I, I, I see the vision. I see the vision. Okay. Plus with five million pounds, that's a lot of money. So that is a lot of I feel like most of the budget would just be spent on you having white hot chocolates. Which yeah. you don't seem very upset well, about. Probably but... on the probably on the rent, actually, for a building. Actually, yeah, no, to be fair. Well, yeah, where would you have the exhibition then? Where would you hold it? Madame Bra. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, just yeah. because San Just Bra. because that makes <laughs> sense. Then yeah, the rent would probably be pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. What would I have? I feel like I would have this is literally just coming to my head. I feel like I would really want a museum of like very specific, either like TV or cartoon characters, like outfits. Mm. So Ooh, then like okay. each room of the exhibition would be like a very, like a particular character. So for example, like that's so Raven on Disney channel, like mm. she was giving us outfits, like episode she was after serving. episode, she was serving the looks. And mm. so I would like an exhibition to see like every single one of her outfits. That'd be cool that would be sick or like a particular movie where like the fashion was very iconic that's what i'd love to see oh do you know what yeah. could be nice like a poet poetry museum that's probably a thing but like a but like a more up-to-date one do you know what i mean mm-hmm. like a poetry museum but that has like a range of poets that has yes. like lgbtq plus poets that has like black poets that has indigenous poets you know like mm-hmm. Maybe we wouldn't even have any white men. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be in the corner at the back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We probably like if they if they were worthy. I think yeah. that'd be cool though. Just one that's like, um, what do you call it? That's like more um representative. Yeah. Of it, I'm trying to think mm-hmm. if there's anything else. I don't know. It's kind of. I just feel like it's so long since I've been to a museum. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I think to be honest, if I had that kind of money and I could de- dedicate it to a museum based project, I don't yeah. think I would build an exhibition. I'd probably invest more money into going around museums and taking the artifacts that they've probably stolen from other places and mm-hmm. giving them back. Turning them. So then those Good things idea. can be on exhibition in the places that they came from. Mm-hmm. I'd rather spend more money on that. But at the same time, I would also like a Vine Museum. So it would have to be like, it'd probably have yeah. to be like, um, like a VR type thing. So you could yeah. like be inside of the most iconic oh, vines from back in the day. I feel like that would be so dumb, but it'd be so much fun. <laughs> it would be fun. It'd I be actually great. just had an idea for one that could be interesting. Okay. Like um, the history of social media. Yeah. but also like yeah. so like going into it though. So not just like, oh, Snapchat started then and Twitter started then, mm-hmm. but like the pros and cons and like the impact it's had on different generations and yes, like the yes. ebbs and flows of, do you know I think you that'd be such an interesting project kind of like social dilemma but mm-hmm. as a museum that'd be pretty that'd sick be cool. yo the tumblr room would be wild mm-hmm. the things that were happening in tum- on tumblr back in the day yeah Ooh. or even myspace Ooh. I watched a yeah, MySpace as well. I just watched a netflix um documentary where a girl had been shot I don't remember the name of it so I probably am spoiling it for anyone because I'm not going to tell you the name because I don't remember it but if I am sorry I don't even know the name so a girl had been shot and um her name was like her her name was Crystal or something and um it was like Riverside I think like near LA but like they they called it like the cheap where people go when they can't afford to live in LA so it was like quite run down and uh like a lot of gang culture and stuff like this was a while ago obviously it was when my space was big mm-hmm. and then they were like trying to find the shooter that killed the girl and then um, the mum and the cousin and the cousin was like young like mm-hmm. in the interview she looked so young 
And I was okay. like, oh my God, she must have been even younger when this happened though. She, um, they made a MySpace page to try and find the shooter. And at first they just made like a random girl, but then it wasn't really working. So then they made a MySpace of her, of like, of the, of the passed away girl to try and okay. find them. And they ended up like finding the shooter. That's crazy. I want to watch that now. Why would you tell me this and then tell me that you don't remember what it's called? That's so selfish. Oh, so, well, you can probably find it. Wait, I'll just Google it. But yeah, you should watch it. I didn't give that much away. There's still loads more that happened. So okay. it's actually really help. interesting. But I was like, that's crazy right that they just used that like um, MySpace. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of like twists in the story where you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Haven't Netflix just come out with a um a documentary series about the downfall of Blockbuster, which is ironic because like Netflix oh have they oh, played I don't know. the I biggest part that. in the downfall of Blockbuster? I haven't seen that. Oh, I it's called it, Why it's... Did You Kill Me? Oh, look at that! It's number two on in the UK today. It's just come up right here. Is it? No way! I watched it before it was before it was. Add that to my list. Gone. Perfect. I'll be watching that. I never knew. Me. I never knew they had come out with that. That sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty ironic very very much so What's that? Right, there's one that looks really good the one or something okay it looks interesting it looks kind of weird so i haven't watched okay. it yet because i need to be in the right headspace but what's that supposed to be about i've never heard of that supposed to be about like a matchmaker woman but it's like techie based and i think it's like quite i think it's quite dystopian and things like that so it's oh like i have heard of that one yeah that sounds like very similar to a one i watched not while a, a while ago um it was called osmosis or something like that but it was a mm. french one and it was basically about this technology that's supposed to like i think it's like a pill or something that you take and then it does something to your your brain and then it's supposed to be able to match you to oh. your like soulmate you're like one perfect person yeah. wherever they are in the world and then it's like it brings weird. you like together that. and <laughs> no so it sounds, yeah it, it was a bit intense it worked out for some of the people others less so but no. like it was it was an interesting concept oh do you know what would make a good museum um like the original people like how cinema came to be i'm sure that's probably yeah. but there's actually so many um arguments about that so i think it would mm-hmm. be interesting have, like maybe it is a thing kind of somewhere but people disagree on so many different things about how felt like film actually came to be in terms of like actually recording and then like who came up with what because okay. something like there's some things where we just don't know if it was actually that person that did it first mm-hmm. or if we just only know about that person doing it and people had been doing it before them yeah. but then I know that like um um Georges Méliès the um French filmmaker he was like one of the first to do like um special effects mm-hmm. on his films and I, I actually went to the film museum in Amsterdam it was really cool and they like showed films and things like that. I don't think they showed any pits, but they like showed films and stuff. And it was really interesting. So I'd love to see like a film history, even if they did like a timeline of like different yeah. films throughout the years and see, you can see like the technology advancing because be they basic. used to like hand paint every single slide. Yeah, and which is he, wild. Like, yeah, he was the first one to do like, I, well, suppose like we, we think he was the first one to do like special effects and things like that, like crazy things where he'd like make mm. people disappear. And it was like, how did it was almost like a magic trick because of the way he had to do things, mm. make it exact. And I, yeah, it's crazy because there's like all these stories about film history and some of them are just such bull. Like <laughs> the one that's like, um, there's one film that was like one of the first ever films supposedly but there probably was more before then um where it's like a train coming into the station it's like 10 seconds long I think and it's actually just a train arriving at the station but because of the angle it kind of looked like the train's coming towards you so then journalists like wrote that people like ran out of the cinema screaming and everything because there was a train coming towards you but it's like a load of rubbish because there was there was like other thing like that wasn't the, like people had kind of experienced images and things like that before like it wasn't like that was the like I, the I don't know if that thing was, that they've ever seen yeah yeah so it was like mm, I don't think so and also it's not like you're gonna know it's not coming out the screen like mm. <laughs> it's not 3d <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so I was like what a load of rubbish like they did mm. not run it cinema screaming like maybe you duck your head 
people are just a little bit dramatic then I feel oh, I like. think it's just journalists to try it and get like is. a story but yeah probably no is. so I think that'd be interesting to see yeah. like yeah to, it could be cool even to see like what different people think like film historians on what was first and like different mm. accounts and then even like different first person accounts of being alive in that time and then like journalist accounts and then see see how different and compared they are. to yeah maybe yeah. we just need a whole museum of journalism and just like oh, put God, like, thanks. like a load of articles up against the, like the actual events just to show people how much shit the media mm. speaks and how they've been doing That's this so, for true. so long but I think I know I do agree that I think generally museums do just need to be a little bit interest more interesting yeah just more like uh, interactive more interactive because like I've been to some museums where like the exhibits should be interesting but the way they lay it out is so fucking boring <laughs> but then other museums I think the best museum I've probably been to is the spy museum in Berlin oh, wow that's a sick that's museum cool. it's very hands-on it shows you like throughout history all the different types of like spy equipment that have been mm-hmm. used by different countries but then there's also one bit where you can do like you know in like every single spy movie they always have a scene where there's like loads of lasers and they have to like <laughs> oh they, my god like, you get to do that have, yeah they literally have one of those and That's you can so like, set what like oh degree of difficulty you want it to do That's and then so fun like, I'd be there all day board. literally I had my never leaving by like some 10 year olds because they can just like flip over the wires and like go under because they're so tiny and I lasted like two seconds before I hit one of the wi- the the lasers but it was so fun I'd never they leave had, I'd be like, there all day <laughs> I it feel was like so I'm good and then they had another bit where it's like you could like dress up because you know how mm, like in spy movies mm-hmm. they always have really shitty disguises so there's mm. a load of like <laughs> shitty wigs and like trench coats and stuff and then they have a load of I love that and you can take pictures it was so good that's so cool so yeah and the film museum in Amsterdam was really good. It had mm. like um, it had like so you could make your own film, like green screen oh, film. Okay. And then there was like what else was there? There was like some films that were obviously being shown because that's kind of makes sense. And then yeah. I think there was like a game. There was like a quiz, but it was like a like a game console almost. And there was you were on each side and you had to vote and try and beat your your friend so it was like a right. proper it was a like game show style it was really fun I loved that museum I literally spent like the whole but I love film so I spent like the whole and then they had the old like all the old artifacts so like yeah. the because original moving picture is like the obviously the new other thing that spins and the picture mm-hmm. so they had like all of that that you could just like play around with and see and I was like oh this is so fun like that's amazing so I I'm trying to think. Edinburgh Museum has a few good, like some of it's a bit dull, but they have quite a few interactive bits that are quite cool. There's one yeah. particular room that's quite good. I think it's like technology room or something. They've got quite mm-hmm. a few different mm-hmm. things in there. But no, I do, yeah. I do like the. See, in London, the, the only museum. museum I acknowledge is the Science Museum. The other <laughs> ones are a waste of time. They're so boring. Really? But the Science Museum slaps. I don't. I think there is really actually good. more than one museum in Edinburgh, but I just mean the big one. <laughs> Everyone yeah. talks about. I don't remember what. Well, the Nash. I think it's just the National Museum. Actually, I um, think I did go to that museum. That is a good museum. Yeah, it's a nice. That's room. the one that I went to. It's also the is architecture good. is just. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Honestly, you could go just to look at the building. Like you don't. There used to be fish there though that were cool, and they're gone now. But <laughs> oh yeah, because I think that's the museum that kept playing me, and I tried to go there like two days in a row, and and both days I went there, it seemed to just randomly shut an hour or after I was there I was like was why so are you shutting at like 4 p.m what's what's going on do you just not want me to see your exhibits this is really rude so funny so I was having a good and time another really good one actually this is so this is the most random museum ever but mm-hmm. it was actually amazing in Canada um in Toronto is um the history of shoes it was actually okay, so interesting yeah well my parents took me so interesting like you think like who wants to learn about that like that's boring and it wasn't really that interactive but the information was just so amazing like it was so cool what you could learn about a shoe and they even had like celebrity shoes so like designers that had made things like we had like Rihanna's shoe for some event and like and it was just cool because you could see how a shoe literally goes from like this platform thing to all these different types of shoes and how much you can do with like the same concept and there's so many different and then it talks that about actually like, sounds really interesting like that the functionality so... of a shoe for like yeah. Inuits and people like that and why like they need a, them to be so warm and how they do them and how like and how the shoe like came to be and it's so interesting but it isn't that interactive but I did really enjoy it. like my parents and I were there for ages 
that is a good time actually to be fair on that kind of similar wave of like seeing how the same concept is born but in different Mm -hmm. parts of the world because essentially all people need the same things but it's like based on what things you have access to I think a food museum would be really interesting because I was making I was making um some calzones earlier and mm-hmm. I've just realized they're still in the oven so we might have to wrap this up before they burn but like it was very interesting to me how like every single part of the world has some kind of dish in their culture which is like yeah. a filling wrapped in some kind of pastry or dough and it's the same concept but it's different in different parts of the world depending on what kind what of you food, have access like, to yeah well they have access to and it's the same with shoes Mm -hmm. like we've all converged into this one point where everyone in the world understands what a shoe is but at one point in time like shoes that Inuits would have had and needed would be very very different to the shoes that like a geisha in Japan would wear but it's the same even now though I think even now uh, although now it's less so of a of a like big difference there's Mm -hmm. still like in different countries you still have to wear really different like footwear even like clothing would be interesting yeah no definitely you have to wear really different but a fashion museum is already a really big thing so but mm-hmm. you do you have to wear different things depending on like the weather really your climate and, yeah and your culture so it's mm. like interesting but um very, very yeah i oh, i miss i want to go to a museum right now <laughs> <laughs> i just want to go back to that shoe museum now i'm like get me off that's uh, that shoe museum sounds so, so cool lit. yeah it's really yeah. cool it's really good it's kind of like it's random but it's really good i highly recommend sometimes like, under, the most underrated museums are the best oh ones, absolutely though. underrated underrated yeah. museum of the year of the year of it of the of whatever <laughs> that do you know what that actually reminds me that I can't remember what country I was in but it was a it was a random city I think it might have been in like Croatia or somewhere like that mm-hmm. and there was like a museum of sadness <laughs> it, was, it was strange <laughs> and it was like did you go just everything to I I can't actually remember if I did or not or if the tour guide basically was just like it's not really worth it. going to but it was basically just about like it had a load of different like dolls and toys and stuff representing how like sadness is being shown in a cult in our culture throughout the years different things that make people sad there was like letters from children during wars and stuff and I was like why is this a thing wow like, why would we want a whole museum dedicated to such negative? I suppose it's interesting, like knowing different things that upset different people. Like what what I different guess things so. can like I pull at different it was a bit like that would be so depressing to go. Oh to. yeah, no, but it could but if you took it from like a more educational thing, if you went in like knowing like okay, I'm gonna learn different things that like that emotionally other different people are connected to, then you could yeah. like if you could distance yourself from it almost. I did go to the Anne Frank Museum actually, which was her horrendous experience. Oh, like not not yeah, horrendous in, um... as in like like really well done, really informational, but just yeah. like a really like gut wrenching experience. Yeah, yeah. Because like yeah, you yeah. want to say after like, oh, it was so good, but you're like, oh no, I don't like, I don't mean that. Yeah, like, no, literally that. that was it? It wasn't like that. Yeah, but no, that was pretty. Some some museums Last are room. like that though. There was a museum I went to in Canada. I think it was in Ottawa or something. Mm. I might have talked about this before, but that one was it was like I didn't me and my friend didn't realize what it was going to be before we went. We thought it was like about architecture or something like that because it was like yeah. in the architectural institute. And basically the whole ex- exhibition was about how happiness has become commodified and is now being sold to us as a society and I was like this is so depressing like we don't even really know really cool what museum. happiness is anymore in um Italy was it in mm. Italy no it wasn't it was I maybe it was Portugal it's like my friend who lives in Italy I was from Italy but she was in Portugal for a year so I visited her in both places oh right I see and I'm like trying to remember <laughs> where we and where we were for that place I don't know. It was one of the two. It was one. It was something. Bea, right. help us out. Um, it was like a contemporary. I think it was a contemporary art museum, but it was really like because when people when you say that you're like oh, but like no, it was really good. Like it was like things made. Like there was a whole exhibition of art of like recycled materials, and it was okay. like representing all of the um. I think it was Portugal. All of the yeah, it was Portugal. All of the um, rubbish in the sea. So they had mm. this big like net that was hung like across the ceiling because it was like two floors. So you 
the second floor it was like a balcony so like there wasn't right, a, like there was it, yeah. so it wasn't actually a ceiling it was hanging off like the staircase and um but above so it was above you and you were down there and it was just like full of rubbish that this person had collected and I know like sometimes that's like mm. well it doesn't take a lot of planning or iron but it was just really like well done and they'd obviously thought it out and um yeah it was like insane the amount of Mm. because when you look up it was then it was like they'd made the room like blue and have like noises of the ocean so it felt like you were like in the ocean with the fish was all sick and I was like this is actually horrendous like there was something that you like walked through oh it was really good actually I wish I can remember the name of it I don't know mm, what it was called. That actually sounds really interesting. Yeah, it was really good, actually. I really liked it. And they had some cool signs. They had things that said stuff like um, relating to, like, money and money being the source of happiness and, like, capitalism. Mm-hmm. So it was just really, really interesting. It was, yeah, it was really well done. But wow. I wish I could remember the name of it, but I don't know. <laughs> I bet you'll be like, oh, wait, it was Italy or something. Wait, I'm going to look on my Instagram and then we're going to wrap this up so you can get your calzones. Also, sorry if you could hear my coffee earlier, everyone. I was drinking it during this because I'm really tired. And yes, it is ice, so it was making noises. But, you know... I'm sorry if there's a lot of feedback on my end because I bought a new pair of headphones last week and I've broken them already, so... I don't think there was any feedback. Well, I didn't get any. Let's hope. Well, we'll we'll see in post-production. I have to try and, like, go scroll back to, like, the days of traveling. We could be here (laughs) while... oh my god like going through all the like pictures from covid oh there's us <laughs> um am i there on. yeah it was from when you visited me in edinburgh oh exciting i'm still upset i lost all the footage i was making a vlog and it was about to be so good and i lost all that footage that is so rude disrespectful oh here we go oh maybe not oh no i think so <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> it's an Sorry. International Women's Day post. <laughs> oh, okay. So my friend was in it and I was like, oh wait, I think I found it, but I haven't. Maybe you'll find it by next episode. I know, I'm so sad I miss traveling. I'm literally just scrolling through it. The further back I go, the more traveling pictures there is. And the more do not start crying on me because I will start crying as well about the, oh, I'm the too tired to, in my life. I'm too tired to cry. It's just depressing at this point valid yeah maybe i'll find it for next week we're literally in gap year and i think it was after that so. yeah i'll let you know next week everyone stay tuned um yeah thank you so much for listening to this week's episode um let us know what museum you would start or, or yeah let's go with that um <laughs> yeah, yeah um you can let us know at our Facebook group. Join us if you haven't already. It's a fun little community. Um, or you can comment on the Instagram post that we post when this goes out. But we'll also do a Facebook post of the group. So, or you can comment on both if you really want to go all out. Um, you should. Also, obviously, you need to follow our Instagram at Fancy Blether. And you can check out our website, www.fancyblether.com. I think we're going to start doing vlogs again. So stay tuned for some writing. Um, so you do want to check out the website now because it's going to be on it um, I think that's everything uh, you can buy us a coffee if you like um, links in the bio as you can hear we, bo- we both really need it at the moment so <laughs> maybe we can even put that coffee money together to give Naomi some new headphones again So, <laughs> and I'll get some ones that are, so generous. Cheap, that, that are not so cheap that I just try and put them on my head and they snap so if you're feeling extra generous you can do that um yeah, that'll be a link to the show notes and yeah have a good week everyone and you will hear from us next week thanks bye. for listening bye <laughs>